Okay, Resetters, Dr. Mindy here, and I have a series of videos for you on the fundamental ideas around fasting that any of you that are trying to build a fasting lifestyle need to know. And on this video, I'm going to go through blood sugar readers. How should you get one? Why should you get one? And if you do get one, what are you looking for? So we're going to talk about timing. We're going to talk about dawn effect. We're going to talk about what if you don't like those numbers. So stay tuned. I got some really key principles principles for any of you that are trying to build a fasting lifestyle or if you're new to fasting, this kind of information is imperative that you learn so that fasting just feels effortless for you. And if you're new to my station, just welcome. I am on a mission to teach people how to build a fasting lifestyle. In this moment in history, we need the world to be metabolically fit and you can achieve that quickly through fasting. So glad you're here, glad you're getting this information. Subscribe if you have it, and if you love it, please share it out together. I know we can change the world. Hope this one helps. Okay, let's dive into what numbers you should be looking for when you fast and how often should you be measuring your blood sugar and ketones. So I want to go through four major things that you need to look at when you are analyzing how a fast is working for you. I want to talk about the timing of this blood sugar ketone reading that, you, that I'm going to encourage you to take. I want to talk about what numbers you're looking for. I want to talk about something called the dawn effect, what happens when we see high numbers in the morning. And then I want to talk about what if you don't like your numbers? What if you're like fasting and you're looking at these numbers and you're like, okay, this isn't working for me. How do you troubleshoot those numbers? So let's start off with this. I am in love with the blood sugar reader. I think that we all should throw our scales away and we should focus in on what food and fasting is doing to our blood sugar. So I'm a huge fan that when you come into building a fasting lifestyle that you get to know how to look at these readers. The best reader that we have found, and I'll do a whole video on this for you guys on all the different readers we've tried, but the best one is the Keto Mojo because the strips cost the least amount and it makes it more affordable for people to be able to do ketone and blood sugar reading on a regular basis. So we'll put a link for Keto Mojo in the comments so you guys have that. Now, I will tell you when I first started doing this, I actually have an old precision reader that I I still use and these readers they last forever they're fairly inexpensive once you get them you're gonna have them for a while it's the strips that you have to keep reordering here's the first thing to do is get your reader get it you know wherever you order it from then what I want you to do is figure out the timing of when you're gonna start to measure your blood sugar and ketones I recommend that everybody take a measurement first thing when they get up in the morning and then you can have your cup of coffee, your cup of tea. Then the second reading that you're gonna take is right before your first meal. So if you're going doing autophagy fasting and you're going 17 hours, that would be literally, you could make your meal and, you'll, and then take a reading before you put any food in your mouth. If you're going 24, you do it between before the, your meal at the 24th hour. You guys at 36, you'll get, you get the picture of what um, I'm recommending. So first thing in the morning, first thing, right before your first meal. Now, what are you looking for? So in the morning, in both of these measurements, let's just say what I want to see is that your blood sugar is somewhere between 70 and 90. And this is millimoles, so this is a American measurements. If you're outside of America, we'll put the conversion of how you convert it um, in the notes. But we want it somewhere between 70 and 90 millimoles, and we would like to see your ketones above 0.5. Now, if you're new to fasting, don't freak out if you wake up or you do this for the first time and your blood sugar is high and the reader says low in ketones. Very common, very normal. We, we see that happen a lot. Now, at the second reading, if you're new to fasting, all I'm looking for, all you want to see is that that second reading, your blood sugar has come down and that your ketones have gone up. So if you wake up and your blood sugar says you're at 97, 
and the second reading it says you're at 90, that's awesome. Like your body is doing what it's supposed to do. If you wake up and your ketones say that they're low and now they're 0.2 at the second reading, that's also awesome. We wanna see what is happening to your body. Is it making that switch? Is it able to start to bring the blood sugar down and make ketones? Because that switch is where you become metabolically fit. So that is in general what you're looking for. Now I wanna add one thing before I go on to the Dawn Effect with you guys. Um, if you do a water fast, a three day water fast, or you do a 24 hour fast, the longer you go with the fasts, the more I encourage you to take three measurements a day, in the morning, at noon, and at night. Um, it just helps you see a trend of what your blood sugar and ketones are doing if you're doing something more than a 24 hour fast. So the 36 hour fast, 48 hours, 72, you would wanna do a three times a day measurement, okay? Now let's talk about the dawn effect because this is gonna happen to you guys. We see it in our resetter group all the time. You're gonna wake up and you're gonna be at like, I don't know, 110 and you're gonna freak out because before you had your first meal the day before, you had, your blood sugar was at 90, and you're like, how the heck can this happen? Well, at in the middle of the night, so let's say you finish eating at your dinner at seven o'clock at night. Usually around two, three o'clock in the morning, your blood sugar is starting to go to a, a pretty low place. And so your body has these internal mechanisms to dump stored sugar, usually from the liver. So at two or three in the morning, your own innate intelligence is dumping sugar that had, it had stored a long time before so that it can make sure that there's enough sugar or glucose for your brain to function normally while you're sleeping. So it dumps it into the bloodstream. You wake up four hours later and your blood meter looks high and you freak out. If this is happening to you, take another measurement a half hour later, take or an hour later, and you will see that that number will come down significantly. It's called the Dawn Effect. It's a very common reaction. Okay, last thing that I wanna talk about with a blood sugar reader. What do you do if you're doing all the right things? You're fasting, you're doing keto, you're eating the way that um, we talk about here on this, on this channel, and you're still getting very high numbers and you're still struggling to get into ketosis. If this is you and you have been doing intermittent fasting for a while, it's time to move into autophagy or 24 hour fasting. You've got to push your body to a new level so that it will go and find stored sugar. The more you push the body, the more it learns to adapt. And one of the ways that you adapt from being a sugar burner to a fat burner is through longer fasts. And the more you do these longer fasts, what ends up happening is you will start to see that blood sugar go down more quickly and you will see that you can get into ketosis with more ease. So that would be my first advice is do some longer fasts. Second thing is look at the meals you're eating. A lot of people fast, but then they eat meals that are high in carbs. You might need to bring your carb load down. And then the third thing I would tell you is if you're doing all the right things, you're still struggling, you've done the longer fast, you're eating really low carb, then I would encourage you to look at toxicity. There are a lot of different reasons that we become insulin resistant. The most obvious one is that we just required that our body make too much insulin by eating too much sugar. The less common one that people don't talk about enough is that toxins in our, in our air, in our food, in our soils, in our water, they block receptor sites for insulin. So your body may be insulin resistant because of a toxicity issue. So it may be time for a detox. So there you go. I, I just cannot emphasize enough how much I want you guys to start to get to know your numbers because they will tell you how your fasting and food is working for you and if we're going to get the world metabolically fit we got to get people off of looking at the scale and on to looking at their blood sugar reader because that tells you how your food is working for you so give me feedback let me know if this is helpful i've got a series of videos coming to you guys
guys on some of these basic principles around fasting that will make your fasting lifestyle so much more enjoyable and so much more effective. So give me feedback. Let me know if that was helpful. And I've got a whole bunch of them coming to you. And as always, keep up the great work. You're a miracle. I hope that helps. <laughs>